everybody. Welcome back to the 100 days of the 2023 National Ethical Code. We are on video number 99. We're so close. All right, if you've stuck with us this whole time, congratulations. That's a lot of material, but we're not done yet. Let's talk about uh, one of the most important articles in the code, which is Article 750. Now, I say it's one of the most important articles in the code. Uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest here. I didn't even cover these things in my textbooks for a long time because there wasn't a lot to talk about in Article 750, but in the 2023 code there were so many changes to talk about energy management systems that now they're a very big part of today's electrical distribution system. So Article 750 covers energy management systems. Now this article was first put into the code back in 2014 and it really didn't say much of anything. Uh, all it really said was, look, if you have an energy management system, these are the loads that you cannot automatically disconnect. Because an energy management system, really, it, it's having to do with load shedding, mainly. So you're going to monitor certain loads, and you're going to control other loads. And those terms, monitor and control, are really important when we use Article 750. So let's say you have a hospital, all right, and you install an energy management system. What Article 750 has mainly been concerned about is which loads you are allowed to shed and which you're not allowed to shed. All right, so middle of July 2023, record-breaking heat wave, right? And we are out of capacity in our hospital, right? We're, we're tripping breakers and everything else. So can we shut off the life support equipment to make sure the air conditioner stays on? Well, I mean, obviously not, you know, but if we don't have a code rule that says that, well, then it's not a code rule. So Article 750, you're, you're going to find in 750.30, it's going to say, listen, dude, uh, you can't automatically shut off the essential electrical system of a hospital. You can't automatically shut off ventilation systems in a hazardous location. You know, a combustible gas detection system, for example, probably should not go through an energy management system. Or if it does, it needs to be monitored but not controlled. So Article 750 is really uh, focused on what we monitor and what we're allowed to control. Now, if you've been here for 99 of these videos, you might remember all the way back in Article 220, 220.70, we mentioned how now in the 2023 code, you can use an energy management system, and that now becomes your load calculation, right? So you're going to set the maximum set point of the energy management system, set that as a continuous load, and that's your load calculation. 625 for electric vehicles we're saying listen you got to have one in one electric vehicle uh, charging equipment per circuit unless you run them through an energy management system so energy management systems are very much a part of today's distribution system and certainly tomorrow's distribution system so 750.30 load management New requirements were added for energy management systems that limit loads. And really, that, that's what 750 does, is it limits loads. So any, an energy management system must not cause a service or feeder or branch circuit to be overloaded. Certainly. Now, that's been in the code ever since the inception of this article. New to this version of the code, it says, listen, if an energy management system limits the current on a conductor, then items one through four apply. All right, so here in the picture, we're showing one type of an energy management system. And you can see, this is this is not your grandma's circuit breaker. You know, you can buy switchboards now that have a full-blown operating system, right, a computer, right on the switchboard. So you can set this thing to limit the loads on a conductor. Maybe you can say, listen, our total loads in this building might total 2,000 amps but we only have 1600 amps of generating capacity, so we're going to limit how those loads get distributed. All right, so again, we talked about this in Article 220 and Article 625. Settings. A single value on the energy management systems can be set for calculating the load as covered in 220.7, which we talked about, and the maximum source current controlled by the energy management system. Right, I mean, that, that's the whole game here. That's what we're doing. If the EMS malfunctions, then current flow must stop. So in other words, it needs to fail safe, right? It needs to fail in the open position, which makes sense. So if it were to fail closed, then we wouldn't, you know, we, we just we wouldn't be throttling the loads anymore. And that's the whole idea of doing this. 
adjustable settings, settings are allowed. And, and this is something that people really have heartburn with. So I get into my energy management system and I say, listen, I've got 2,000 amps worth of load, but I only have 1,600 amps of generating capacity. So we're going to set these settings and we're going to say, listen, not everything can run at the same time. So if this turns on, this needs to shut off. Or if two of these come up, then we need to throttle back the power usage, power consumption on this load. So yeah, we can do that. However, we don't just want any Tom, Dick, or Harry to walk in and undo the settings. So the settings have to be, you know, in accordance with the following. Items one through three, they can be behind a removable and sealable cover over the adjustment device, or bolted enclosure doors, or locked doors accessible only to qualified persons. Now here in the photograph, I'm showing a very, very, very small version of an energy management system. And you can see it's got this little lockable cover and that's all you have to have. Put a padlock over it and you're done. Now, if that bothers you, I, I understand, but these provisions are not new. This is copied and pasted out of section 240.6C. You know the rules for adjustable trip circuit breakers, right? If you've got a big old thousand amp frame circuit breaker, um, you can adjust the trip points, right? You're usually going to have like six settings. You're going to have the long time pickup and you're going to have the short time. You're going to have the ground fault setting and, you know, so you can adjust those settings and usually you're going to have a piece of plastic over those settings and that complies with item one, a removable sealable cover. Or if you have it behind bolted enclosure doors or in a room that's locked and is only accessible to qualified persons, right? So nothing new here. This, this is new to Article 750, not new to the code. This has been in Article 240 for a long time. Or items four and five, if the settings are protected by a password or a software that's accessible only to qualified persons. And again, that also is in Article 240. So here you can say with you can see with this user interface here you type in your username your password and you can program the trip points you can program the load shedding you can show how loads are going to ramp up or throttle back marking equipment has to be marked with the following number 1 the maximum current setting all right so if you have 2,000 amps of load and 1,600 amps of capacity, then you're going to need to mark it and say, look, 1,600 amps is the maximum setting, and, and then we're not adding loads without shedding other loads. Number two, the date of the settings and the, and the date that we did the calculations. Number three, the loads and the sources that are associated with the equipment. And then these or similar words, quote, settings for limiting the current must not be bypassed. All right, so here we've got this piece of switch gear that's at a ski resort uh, near me. This is at a, well, I won't tell you where it's at, but they've, uh, they installed this equipment for multiple reasons. But one of the things they, that they control through here is the snow machines. So this year they didn't need the snow machines because they got 900 inches of snow, just mind numbing number. But sometimes we don't get 900 inches. Sometimes they have to manufacture artificial snow. Like when we had the Olympics back in 2002, we had to make snow. It just wasn't a good snow year. Now, they installed all of these snow making machines all through the facility, but you would never be able to run them all at the same time. I mean, if you wanted to run them all at the same time, you would run out of, you'd run out of power immediately. So they run them through an energy management system which makes them non-coincident loads. If this one is on, this one cannot turn on, right? So we can use section 220.60 for the load calculations. And now with the energy management systems, you can use 220.70 as well. So we need to mark it down. Markings have to be visible to qualified persons before they maintain, service, examine, or adjust the equipment. And they have to comply with the regular marking rules in Article 110. So there you go. If you want to use an energy management system, be my guest. Uh, in some applications, you're probably going to have to, right? The code doesn't say you have to install one of these. However, the requirements of your installation might make it so you have to install one of these. You know, I mean, if you have a parking lot full of electric vehicle supply equipment, 10 years ago, the total load in that parking lot was five amps worth of lights. Now it's 5,000 amps for the chargers. 
you're going to have to put in an energy management system to be able to throttle that down to something that's not 5,000 amps. So definitely something that if you're an installer, a designer, uh, uh, an inspector, you, you need to be very much aware of the requirements for energy management systems because these things are not going anywhere. All right, we got one more video to cover, and that's Article 760 Fire Alarm Systems. You made it this far. I trust that you'll stick around for one more video. I look forward to it, and I hope you do too.